Little has been said of the rivalry between Boris Balkan and the Baroness Frida Kessler. There was Kessler's rant she gave Corso by merely thinking about him, suspecting he wanted her book. Then there is the postcard that hints they may have had common goals. Were there hints of their relationship obscurely hidden within the film? Today we examine how Boris Balkan and Baroness Kessler are alike and how they are different that could have fueled their animosity towards one another. And make sure to like, share, or subscribe if you enjoy this content and want to see more like it. The Ninth Gate, directed by Roman Polanski, was released in 1999 and loosely based on the novel The Club Dumas, written by Arturo Perez Riverti. The first overt clue of Kessler's disdain for Balkan comes in her Paris library during her first meeting with Corso. When informed of Andrew Telfer's death, she immediately suspects the new owner of one of the three copies of the Nine Gates of the Kingdom of Shadows is Balkan. Her demeanor transforms from the cool old lady to a ferocious and scorned woman who would scorch the earth underneath Balkan's feet if she could. The second clue comes in Kessler's library on her second coerced meeting with Corso. This time, the wolf in sheep's clothing is more persuasive and Kessler is receptive to Corso reviewing her copy. Corso discovers a postcard from Balkan showcasing the Devil's Tower and bragging that he found it first. He addresses her by and signs using first names. Does this indicate a closer relationship? Where does the feud come from? First we explore how the two are alike, yet very different. Both are wealthy, work out of their own office buildings, hire staff to look after them. Each is in the book business. Kessler writes them, Balkan publishes them. While both are occult enthusiasts dedicating their life to it, Balkan makes millions publishing other works, none of them his. Kessler made a million from one book and has written unknown others. She was working on her latest project at the time of her death, a sort of biography as we could call it. Kessler had profited, writing about the Prince of Darkness Balkan himself worships. There are other differences how each practiced the occult. Kessler confessed she once belonged to a witch's coven, the Order of the Silver Serpent, but since it has degenerated to a social club for bored millionaires and celebrities, something Boris Balkan would not be caught dead in. Kill, yes, but not participate. In fact, Balkan mocked the social club. He believed in the book, not the celebration over it. He even bragged how he and he alone truly understood. Perhaps when mocking the crowd, he may have mocked Kessler's past. One other difference that accentuated their philosophical divide is only read in the script, omitted from the film. Balkan does not believe the devil can be conjured, summoned, or make a physical appearance. He manifests in spirit and lives through others who carry out his bidding for him. This contradicts Kessler's account who, at 15 years old, saw the devil in front of her, as clear as you and me. Kessler would later write a book about it and make her first million. Would this be something Balkan could believe, respect, or open his mind to? Could the two have had a romantic relationship in the distant past? There is nothing in the film other than a postcard that could have hinted so. There was nothing in the screenplay either. Are there other hints? What about Balkan's name, his last name? The Balkans make up a geographic area in southeastern Europe that includes several modern states. If his name represents historical context, how does this relate to Kessler? As explored in an earlier video, Kessler's character is deliberately German who finds home or refuge in Paris. While the film portrays Dean Corso's second visit to the Baroness as more conciliatory, the script had different ideas originally. It was written that Boris Balkan gave Corso leverage to gain access to Kessler's library. Leverage in form of a photograph that ties a much younger, more beautiful Frida, standing next to political figures, powerful German personalities from the 30s and early 1940s. And during World War II, the Balkan territories were subjugated by Axis powers. Is there a connection between Kessler and Boris Balkan's family history? Or was the possession of the Book of the Nine Gates enough for animosity? Boris Balkan credited himself as a great authority in the occult, the study of the Prince of Darkness. He makes his fortune in books, 
spends it on books, and keeps a secluded library under lock and key using nearly an unbreakable code. But the three copies were allocated to others, a German in exile, an American couple who got lucky during a trip to Spain, and a non-believer. The book was one keeping Balkan from a complete library, and it angered him. The one thing common to both is tipped off in Kessler's postcard, and over Balkan's shoulder seen in his library, it's the Devil's Tower. It is implied that both sought its location, for a reason never spelled out, only assumed. It was part of Torquia's plan, part of Lucifer's plan. The tower, now presumed a Balkan property, waited for discovery, for a ritual, that the Baroness Kessler never figured out when she had her book. In some ways, neither did Balkan. Up until their final moments, the two found their fate breasted in hot flames, within reach of what was left of their copy of the book. This is something they will forever have in common. Let me know in the comments below, did you see a feud between Boris Balkan and Baroness Kessler? This is Mr. G of Synergy saying, don't like getting a postcard during the age of websites? Use it as your bookmark. Check out other videos on my channel. Thanks for watching.